Hello! Welcome to the integral calculus video for the average value of an exponential function. The intensity of this video is mild. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to compute the average value of an exponential function, and you should be able to interpret this quantity in a physical context. Let's start with some motivation. The main example we're going to look at is, what is the average value of e to the x on an interval, say, 0 to 100? We're going to look at it on a bunch of different intervals, but this is a question you can get your hands on and think about. Now, this is a very abstract problem. It's just about functions, and the choice of 100 seems pretty um, unusual. But the real motivation is that we're going to be thinking about infectious diseases. So if an infectious disease infects r to x people per day, so an exponential amount, what is the average infection rate on an interval 0 to 100? And how can we use this to interpret um, things about exponential growth? So before we get into a continuous example of e to the x, let's first look at a discrete example, which is uh, looking at things with natural numbers. So what is the average value of 2 to the x, where x is a natural number, after 2, 3, 4, and 10 days? So the three-day average would be take the value at x equals 1, 2, and 3, add them up, divide by the number of terms. So in this case, the answer would be 5. The four-day average would be 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, divided by the number of terms. So that would be 7.75. The five-day average would be about 12.6. And then jumping ahead to the 10-day average, it would be about 204.7. Now, what I want us to see here is, one, we, we know the averages. We know how to take the average um, from the sort of standard way if, if we have a discrete set of values. Um, and also, I want us to think about, do these terms have any sort of pattern or um, do they have a particular growth rate? So one thing we can recognize right away is that they're growing. But that's not surprising because we're taking uh, very big numbers here. But the thing I want us to focus on is where relative to the terms that we took is this average? So 5 is somewhere between the middle and the last number. 7.75 is also somewhere near the middle, but maybe near the third term. 12.6 is sort of between the middle and the fourth term. And so it looks like it's going to float around maybe a little bit to the right of the middle. But when we take a very large term like 10, then we see that 204.7 is really around the sort of seventh term. So it's, it's moving away from the middle and closer to the edge. And this is what we're going to see going forward with continuous examples, is that the average value of an exponential function is going to be pretty close to the final term. All right, now let's see the continuous example. So let b be a large positive number, like 100 if you want. What's the average value of e to the x on that interval 0 to b? So our definition of the average value for a continuous function is take the integral, which is kind of like add up everything together, and then instead of dividing by the number of terms, you divide by the length of the interval. So this is our average value. And lucky for us, exponentials are easy to integrate. So by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, we get that it's this. You can evaluate it at b and zero. And so this is our answer, this is the average value. But when b is very large, like 100, this is e to the 100 divided by 100, and you have this minus 1. This minus 1 isn't going to affect the final answer very much. It's going to affect it by 1 exactly. But we know that e to the 100 is just so much larger than 1. So for the purposes of visualization and the algebra, we're going to assume that this is actually just approximately e to the b over b. The numbers we're going to be talking about are so large that it doesn't really matter that we're off by one. All right, so now we know that the average y value is 1 over b times e to the b, but at what x value is this achieved? 
Well, let's solve for it now. So e to the x is equal to 1 over b e to the b. Exactly when you take log of both sides, they'll still be equal. And logs play very nicely with these e's. So here we're using the logarithm rule that we can pull up the exponent. Here we're using the logarithm rule that uh, if you divide by two things, it's log of one minus log of the other. Log of e is one. And log of e to the b, again, you can just pull out the b. So that's that b. All right, so you can review these log rules if you need. The point here is that this y value is achieved when x is b minus log b. Now that might not look too special, but we can interpret it as being just to the left of b. So it's b minus something, we're going to think of something small. We usually think of logarithms as small. So the, the average is achieved just to the left of b. Let's see what this looks like. So here's our function e to the x, and here I've taken b equals 2. So this is the value that is achieved at 2, and 2 minus log 2 is a little bit to the left of 2, and at that x value, the average value is achieved of the function. Now, um, you can think about where does this x value actually sit in between 0 and 2, and for this picture, it kind of looks like it's in the middle. It's not quite in the middle, it's, it's closer to 2 than to zero. Um, but this is just because two is a pretty small number. Once we start taking large numbers, something different will happen. And let's investigate that now. So where does this x value, b minus log b, appear in the interval zero to b? Well, let's compute some examples and see. If b is 10, then b minus log b is around 7.5. So how close is b minus log b to the right endpoint if b is 10? Well, it's 75% of the way there, it's, or 3 quarters of the way there. If we take b equals 100, then b minus log b is 95. So this is very close to the right endpoint. It's 95% of the way there. Okay, and if b is 1,000, then b minus log b is 993. So it's 99% of the way to the right of the interval. So we can see that as you take larger intervals here, the average value is going to achieve, is going to be achieved very close to the right endpoint. Now, you can see that it looks like this number is approaching this number. So b minus log b appears to be approaching b. Now, the way to make this formal is to talk about limits. And the limit you want to look at is this one. b minus log b over b, the limit as b goes to infinity, is 1. So you can check that later. Okay, so now what does this tell us about exponential growth? So suppose an infectious disease infects e to the x people every day, where x is positive. What is the average infection rate on an interval from 0 to 100? Well, we know that, that the average rate occurs very close to 100. In, it, in fact, occurs on the 95th day. So on the 100th day, if you want to compute the total number of people infected, you multiply 100 by the average rate, which we know was five days ago. So this is maybe a counterintuitive thing about exponential growth, is that the average value occurs very near in the, in the past. It doesn't occur about halfway, it occurs like a couple days previous. Okay, now we're going to give an example um, that relates to uh, deaths and infection uh, rates. Um, so you may wish to skip this if it's a sensitive topic for you. So one application is under the assumption that deaths caused by an infectious disease are growing exponentially at a rate of e to the x deaths on day x, then on the hundredth day, you can compute the total deaths throughout the pandemic by computing a hundred so that's the number of days, times the number of deaths on day 95. And that'll tell you how many deaths there were total. Uh, I think this is quite counterintuitive because um, you would think maybe that you would multiply by a value that was closer to what happened on like day 50 or day 60. But this is one of the surprising things about exponential growth. 
All right, here are some other exercises. Find an approximate x value where 2 to the x achieves its average value on 0b. Let r be greater than 1 be a constant. Find an approximate x value where r to the x achieves its average value on 0 to the b. So these are generalizations of what we did. For both of the previous examples, show by taking an approximate limit that the x value where the average occurs is close to x equals b. Also, prove the limit fact on slide 8. There are answers for the first two questions here if you want. Finally, let's take some time to reflect. In what ways is exponential growth counterintuitive? Did we make reasonable approximations in this video? Explain. What situations are modeled by exponential growth? We chose uh, infectious disease spreading, but what else is modeled by exponential growth? In the application on slide 9, we made the assumption that the infectious disease was growing at a rate of e to the x. How reasonable is this assumption? How could you modify it to apply to a specific infectious disease? Thank you very much and have a great day.